I'm going to talk through six online learning design patterns. Now these patterns are commonly used in online learning scenarios and what I'm going to do is actually use learning environment modeling models that I've created to explain how they're used in ways that you can actually apply them into your own design practices when you're designing online learning courses. So let's look at the first one. This one that I have here is called the Absorb Do Connect model. And the Absorb Do Connect model is really organized around the standpoint of providing information first, allowing the learner to practice using it, and then connecting that information uh, to their own life experiences and future learning. So let's take a look at the model here. So here's a model that I've created using uh, learning environment model modeling uh, based on the Absorb Do Connect model. So first, we have a demonstration here. Now, the demonstration is really based around um, demonstrating a skill, um, and in this case, it's through the use of a video. Now, um, the, once the learner views that video in the demonstration, then they have an opportunity for an application exercise. And here they actually submit that application exercise through a, an assignment. So this would be them practicing skills. It could be a problem set, like in a math course, um, or it could be some sort of other practice uh, activity that's been prepared. Once they've practiced that application exercise and conducted the application exercise, then, it's, um, then they actually connect to their prior learning through a lessons learned discussion. And this is in an online environment. So what we have here in this sequence is a very simple absorb, do, connect model. And it moves in that, in that direction through this particular model. Okay, so let's look at the next example. This example is a, a model called instrumented learning. And instrumented learning is based on providing some sort of diagnostic instrument first in the, um, uh, in the learning sequence, and then allowing the learners to use the information they gathered from that sequence as a part of their learning experience. So let's take a look at what this model looks like in a practical uh, standpoint. So here we have an example of where a, um, an online questionnaire, a, a leadership skills assessment is provided. And many organizations use these types of assessments uh, readily as a way of understanding personality types and so forth. And so once this assessment is provided, uh, then there's an opportunity where the learner moves into a series of instructions. So there's a welcome, there is a opportunity to discuss the results from that questionnaire, there's often then an opportunity where a skilled facilitator is presenting the results. Um, next, there's a connecting findings to personal situations. So they learn the results, they understand what those results mean, and then there's a time of large group discussion. And this could be done in a discussion board or, or something of that nature. And, and then finally, the, the leaders are able to apply these new skills and new insights in a case study exercise. And the, the facilitator is providing feedback on that case study exercise. So this model provides a sequence, if you will, for instrumented, instrumented learning that begins with the, the assessment questionnaire right up front. And then the learner uses that as they work throughout that, um, that learning process. This next model is a model titled Nine Events of Instruction, and this is commonly referred to as Gagne's Nine Events of Instruction. And what it is, it's a series of steps that walk through a process of presenting instructional material. And so in, in this example, I'm going to show you a way that um, it could be structured. So a nine events of instruction actually begins with an attention getter, a way to get a learner's attention in terms of how um, of something that appeals to them. This could be done through a video or a story. Next, the learning objectives for the material is presented. And in this case, it's presented in an HTML uh, file. Uh, next, there is some uh, an options here, whether it's a... Um, information being presented that allows them to recall information, um, or a, a peer discussion allows them to dialogue about what is um, their, their prior learning in that context. 
And next, um, there is a, uh, a lesson that is provided. And granted, these lessons can vary greatly in terms of um, their method, their presentation, um, how they're structured, uh, but some sort of instructional lesson is given there. So once the lesson is provided, um, then there are opportunities here to elicit performance from the learner. And granted, these could be through instructor-provided prov uh, feedback um, into that performance activity, or it could be pre-populated feedback through some sort of a quiz or, or things of that nature uh, in an online environment. And finally, there is a final assessment that is provided, and this assessment can be done through um, a variety of methods to include discussions, quizzes, drop, drop box assignments, things like that. And then a, an opportunity where the learner can further their learning is also presented um, after that assessment. So it's kind of a continuation of the learning experience. So altogether, these nine events of instruction provide a sequence or a series of learning opportunities and ways of, of structuring elements in a learning environment based on that, that process. This is an example of a learning environment model uh, titled for anchored instruction. Now, anchored instruction is all about using prior learning to set up future learning. So let's look at the example of how this might be applied in a learning environment. So here we have um, a very simple series of instruction here, and it begins uh, with an introduction video, or so introducing the topic. Then it moves to a dialogue or a discussion around past teaching experiences. Now this part is key in anchored instruction because we're uh, providing context from individual um, uh, learners' past experiences, in this case teaching experiences. Uh, next, um, some a series of teaching tips in this particular example is provided. So this would be more of your standard instruction or new content that's being presented. Uh, next, the learner is provided an activity to explore um, how these teaching tips might be included. And again, it's always basing back to these prior um, uh, experiences of the, the relevancy to it. The instructor provides feedback in that opportunity, and then finally the learner is able to apply and do an application activity that they would then submit um, as evidence of their, their learning experience. Um, so in this particular anchored instruction example, um, everything again is based back to those past teaching experiences that are provided. This next model is an interesting one. It's actually based on design and on design studio method. Now, design studio methods are commonly used in design courses, such as uh, graphic design or design fields like uh, architecture, engineering, things of that nature. But at the core of a design studio method is a problem. It's a design problem that's trying to be solved. And so this particular example has been adapted slightly to work in an online environment. So you notice at the core of this is the design challenge. And from the, from the prior examples that we've, that we've seen, this one looks very different. It begins with this sort of challenge, this um, application practice exercise. And these other elements are actually connecting into that process. So there's tutorials, there's recommended readings. Um, there's ideation and sharing and peer feedback that actually moves both ways. Everything is based around how the learner engages in this individual project. Now, these are typically things could be like how might we redesign a process or how could we redesign a city park for accessibility. These are some examples that could come up. Um, once the learner engages in that design exercise, they then provide a final presentation um, of that design challenge. Now, in this particular example, I've um, included here a simulated client feedback message. So based on how the learner does, they're given feedback about how they do from a, a sample client. This is to emphasize the realism that comes through that. Then, of course, there is also a, an instructor feedback opportunity uh, that's provided into the final exercise as well. Um, in some design methods, this can be um, run as a cycle. So this design challenge may run um, over and over and over again in many iterations 
until they're mo ready to move to the final presentation exercise. There's quite a few variations on this particular model, but it's one that you should be aware of in terms of how you might structure your online learning lesson. The final example that I'd like to share with you um, is a model developed by Swanson and Law called the Whole Part Whole Series. Now this is a classical adult learning um, instructional design model, if you will, and it gets it in terms of, again, how to sequence instruction and present that material in a way that learners are able to engage with it in, in various contexts. And so let's look at the example of how this works out from a learning environment modeling standpoint. So here you see the large context of what's going on in the model. Now I'm going to zoom in on a few elements here to uh, kind of share with you how this works. Now the whole part whole is a sort of series of cues in terms of how the instruction is focused. So to begin here, um, the beginning part is really focused on the whole. So we begin an overview of the objectives, um, a high-level overview of good and bad performance in this particular example, and a leadership model. Um, this part right here is dealing with the uh, first whole uh, of, the, of the particular model. So next it actually breaks down into a focusing area where it moves more into the specific. So the parts of the leadership model and applying the specific parts are the part series of, of the model. So these again are all done in a video demonstration uh, in this particular example. And then as we zoom in here to the final whole part, the leadership case study and implications on leadership um, in a discussion format is the final um, whole. So uh, as we zoom out here, we notice we have a sequence or a pattern that emerges um, related to the whole and then the part and the whole. And this, this series of instruction is organized in a way that allows the learner to move through that series um, while giving, while interacting with these various elements within the learning environment. So these examples I've, I've presented to you are, are six good examples that you can rely on and, and draw on when you're designing your own online learning lessons. Now one thing to keep in mind is that these are not prescriptive and that you can apply the models just as I've presented them. But what you can do is begin with them and start and modify based on the particular needs uh, that the learning environment that you're trying to create has. Um, you, so you can rely on your um, uh, ass assessment documents, your uh, analyzing documents, and your planning documents, things of that nature, and be able to um, create these models in ways that align best uh, to the type of learning environment that you're creating.